So in this next problem, we're going to talk about solving word problems. So here I have four steps that are a few steps to take in order to solve a word problem. Um, in question number eight, it says, a party rental company has chairs and tables for rent. The rent total cost to rent three chairs and five tables is $38. The total cost to rent six chairs and two tables is $26. What is the cost to rent each chair and each table? So whenever you approach a word problem, the first thing you want to do is you want to skim read the word problem. So believe it or not, that might not sound that might sound pretty obvious, but a lot of students do not read the problem. So make sure you read it. And when I say read it, just skim read it, just to get an idea of what type what type of problem it is. So you're reading it just to figure out what type of problem it is. You're just kind of ignoring the numbers for now. You just want to say what type of a problem it is to understand the situation. So the situation is there's a party going on. There's chairs and tables that need to be rented. There's a cost for each table and chair. Um, and we want to know what is the cost of one chair and what is the cost of one table. So here, to determine what type of problem it is, in algebra, um, there's only a certain amount, a certain type of of problems that you'll see in word problems. The first one is called direct translation. So direct translation is when you're just translating English to math. There's no magic formula. You're just translating the words that you see to, 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 um, to math equations. The second type is called um, a motion problem. Um, a motion problem is when something is moving and you have distance, rate, and time. The third time is called a mixture problem. That's when you're mixing two, three things together. Another type of problem is a geometry problem that you might see later on in this class. And I'll throw one more type of problem. You might see a work problem where you have two or more people working together to get a job done. So really there are only five types of word problems that you'll see in algebra. Uh, and most often not, it'll be one of the three above. So when I read this problem, what kind of a problem do you think it is? Is it a tra direct translation where you just translate English to math? Is there motion involved where there's distance, rate, and time? Is it mixture where you're mixing two things together? Is it geometry or is it work? Well, the correct answer is that it's a direct translation. There's no um, magic formula. It's just directing, it's just translating the English to math. So with direct translation, we just need to translate from English to math. So here, step two, once we figure out what type of problem it is, because if we find out it's a motion or mix or geometry problem or work problem, we're gonna need a formula for those. Whereas direct translation, there's no formula that's needed. Whereas there's a formula for the rest. So in step two of approaching a word problem, it's now you assign the variables so variables meaning X, Y, Z, whatever. You assign variables to the unknown quantities, quantity or quantities, right? So if there's more than one thing that you don't know, then you assign more than one variable. Assign variables to unknown quantities. So here in this problem, I notice what, or what is it that we don't know? What we don't know is the cost to rent each chair and each table. So we want to know the cost of renting out each chair and each table. So I'm going to let, so here in this problem example, I'm going to let, um, and we could let it be X or Y, but let's just, the C for chair, let's C equal to the cost of each chair. So I'm assigning a variable to something that we don't know. And I'll let T equal to the cost of each table. A lot of students skip this step and they just let X and Y and then in the end they don't even know what X and Y stand for. So make sure you assign a variable and you clearly write out what that variable stands for. Step three, so now that we know what type of a problem it is and we have two variables to go, to go with two things that we don't know in the problem, step three is now we are going to reread the problem carefully. Now we're, instead of skim reading, we're going to be rereading it carefully. And as we do so, create equations. So we are, in other words, translate English to math. So I've told you guys before that math is like a language. 
And here, you are being a translator when you are doing word problems. You're translating English words to mathematics. So here, um, notice that there's two unknowns. So guess what? We are on a chapter about systems of equations. So there are two unknowns, then there's going to be two equations that you're going to be creating. Two, uh, two unknowns, so two equations. So what are the two equations? Well, let's read this. A party rental company has chairs and tables for rent. The total cost to rent three chairs and five tables is $38. So how can I create that? How can I translate three chairs and five tables equals to $38 into an equation? Well, if I rent three chairs, we know, <clears throat> so we know that C represents the cost of one chair. So if there's gonna be three chairs, the cost for three chairs is gonna be three multiplied by C. Plus, we know that T is the cost of one table. So how many tables did they rent out? They rented out five tables. So there's five tables. How many, how much is it gonna to cost to rent out the tables? Well, it's gonna be five times T. So five times the cost of each table will give you the total cost of the tables. So if you add these two together, the total cost is, so is is a big word for equal, is $38. So that's my first equation. My second equation is the total cost to rent six chairs now. So six times C will give me the cost of the chairs and two tables. So plus two times T, two tables times the cost of each one will give you the cost of all the tables is equal to $26. I'm gonna put 26 here. What is the cost to rent out each chair and each table? So I'm done reading the word problem and as you can see, I've created two equations with two unknowns. So now this goes back to, I put away the word problem, now this goes back to just solving a system of linear equation. So step four then is um, use algebra skills that you, we've learned to solve the equations. So we need to find out what C and T are. Well, now we go back to looking at this and there's three ways of doing it. We could graph it. We could use method of substitution or the method of elimination. I see the C's and the T's are lined up, so I'm gonna use a method of elimination. So the method of elimination here, um, I know that I have 5T and 2T, 3C and 6C. I wanna eliminate one of the letters. Let's say I wanna eliminate T. Okay, so if I wanna eliminate T, I'm gonna multiply each equation by, um, let's see. So if I wanna eliminate my T, so here I'm gonna to think to myself, eliminate T. So if I wanna eliminate my T, I need the T's to be opposites of each other. Well, the multiple that they both have in common is a 10T and a negative 10T. So here, by having this written down, 10t and negative 10t, I know that I wanna create this into a 10 and this is to a negative 10. Well, how do I make this into a 10? Well, I'm gonna multiply by two. So I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by two. By multiplying by two, I end up getting, so what do I get? Two times three C is six C plus two times five T, 10 T is equal to 38 times two is 76. The bottom, I know that I want a negative 10t because I want it to cancel out with a 10t. So what do I need to multiply by on the bottom to make it a negative 10t? I need to multiply the 2t by a negative five. So if I multiply everything by negative five, then I end up getting negative 30c minus 10t is equal to 26 times negative five is negative 130. So now I'm going to add my equations together, and when I add them, it should eliminate the t, which is what I wanted, right? So these two become zero. As a result, this becomes negative 24c is equal to negative 54. And now I divide both sides by negative 24. Um, I'm feeling like I did something wrong. 130 minus 76. 54, yep, I think I did it right. So now, when I divided both sides by negative 24 to, to get the coefficient by itself, I find out that C is equal to, I plug this into my calculator, 
negative 54 divided by negative 24 gives me $2.25. And I put the dollar sign because that was the cost of each chair. So be careful if you call this an X or Y or Z or whatever, make sure you know what it's associated to. Uh, the reason why I call it a C is just to make it easy for me to remember that the cost of each chair is $2.25. So here, what is the cost of each chair? The cost of each chair is $2.25. And then it asks you, what is the cost of each table? Well, if I have C, now I can find out what T is. So T, I can plug this into either one of the equations to solve for T. So I ran out of space here. I'll just plug it into the first one. 3C plus 5T equals to 38. I'm going to plug $2.25 in here. So when I plug $2.25 in here to solve for T, $2.25 times 3 gives me 6.75. So here, I'm just going to write down here, 6.75 plus 5T is equal to 38. 38 minus 6.75 is going to give me 31.25 is equal to 5t. Divide both sides by 5. I end up getting that t is equal to $6.25. So c is, sorry, $6.25. So the table is $6.25. And you can always, always check your work with word problems or any equation by plugging in these values, $2.25 and $6.25. Plug these into the two original equations to make sure that these are true statements.